What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video here on my channel. Before we get started, please drop me a like, comment and subscribe um, and that would be fantastic. We'll get straight into it. It's going to be a shorter video. I keep saying that and then it ends up being 10 minutes, but today there's not a lot that's happened. Uh, the main thing being um, that Adams is flying for his medical, Tyler Adams. Um, yeah, look, I, we've spoke about this before and yeah, it wasn't the player that I thought that I wanted. Um, look, he'll do a decent job, and I'm and I'm gonna fully back Tyler Adams. Um, you know, as long as he fits in the squad, he, he you know as long as he's not detrimental in any sort of way, which I'm I'm sure he's not. And as long as he does his uh, does his thing on the football football park, I'll, I'll be a happy man. So he's gonna come in. Um, there's no fee touted yet. I think it, it was 15 million that went to 20 million, and um, 20 million, yeah, it's better than the 40 that was originally. Uh, originally uh, put on him, um, but when you think twenty million for him plus, you know, uh, I know you know Kamara is looking unlikely, but um, yeah, bit frustrating. But anyway, Tyler Adams looks like it's coming in, so I'm gonna back him no matter what, um, and hopefully everyone else but does back him too, which I'm, I'm sure you all will. Um, Leeds United are apparently offering more money than what AC Milan are for De Catalare, or De Catalare, um, however you want to pronounce it. He, I'm not, it, it didn't tell, it didn't, say, it didn't say how much money it was, um, but it looks like we are offering more than AC Milan. It looks like they offered 17.5 million was their first offer with at plus add-ons. Um, geez, that would be a steal if they got it for that, but you know, he offering Champions League football, he, you know, he'd be happy to take it, but. I think the club will turn around and say we need more than that. Um, so we've offered more. From what I can tell in the past, it's been like 25, 25, 26 million. Um, so they're likely to accept the offer from Leeds United. Only problem is De Ketelare, De Ketelare, whether he wants to come to us or not. So that one's ongoing. I've got the Rodrigo de Paul feeling about that one now. So, um, you know, I'll keep talking about it if anything pops up. But I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm not feeling that one's very likely at all. Um, I'm just hang, I'm just clinging on to the hope that he does come in. Uh, Leif Davis looks like he's going to Ipswich uh, on a permanent deal. Um, maybe alone, who knows what they're going to do, but it looks permanent. It looks like he's not in the plans at all. Um, no, it's sad to see him go. He's been part of this youth setup for such a long time. And <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and uh, didn't really kick on, which is unfortunate. Um but obviously, we do need that left back as well. But he's just not not made for the Premier League right now. So he'll go out to Ipswich and, uh, you know, hopefully he does well. Um, Roberts has got a few suitors for a loan move. QPR, Hull, and now Sheffield United have entered the race. Any of those will do. Uh, I've got a soft spot for QPR. I don't know why. I think it's because I watch this uh, content creator called James Lawrence Olcott. You guys might be familiar um, I love his videos. He's really, really good. Um, and uh, so I, I've been watching him. I watch his podcast he does with another guy called Flav, and it's like my favourite thing to watch on a Saturday morning uh, when I go for a bike ride. Sorry if I, I keep coughing. Um, I've got a really sore throat there. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, loan moves, those will all do. I think QPR is my favourite for for him. Um, I think we'll get a lot more game time there. Uh, Sheffield United seems like an actual a, a decent fit as well. I can imagine him wearing the Sheffield United uh, shirt. So, he, look, he just needs some time away. I think he needs time away from Leeds and the negative atmosphere around him. And yes, it is his own doing. Um, don't get me wrong. I don't. I don't rate him. I think he's great on the ball, but I just don't. He just doesn't score or create anything um, as of yet. But hopefully, he, look, he goes away alone, does well, comes back and kills it for us. That's the that's the hope. That's the plan. So, fingers crossed. On that one, uh, come window is back on the books. Apparently, apparently it's, it's, it's uh, we're really looking at him, or we have been looking at him. Uh, Longs or Lens is out of the out of the race now. Uh, they can't afford him. So interesting. I think it was seventeen million last time I um, looked at him uh, in a video. It was about seventeen, seventeen point five million for him. Um, I think that's fair. I think he'd be a great player. I'd really like to see him come in, and especially seventeen million is not much. So. We need a striker. If we got him in for 17 million, I think that'd be fantastic. Um, rather than going and spending heaps on um, a player like De Catalare or wasting our time on a player that doesn't want to be here. Like, I understand he's number one target, but uh, if you can't get him, stop wasting your time. 
Australia, the Australia tour is coming up very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see how that one develops. Uh, but surely there must be there must be some reason why we're still in for the De, Catalare, unless we're just uh, being this is Victor Order being stubborn and just being like I want that I want that player and not taking no for an answer, which I understand in his line of business he would be like that. Um, so now yeah, it, Kamara deal looks unlikely with uh, Tyler Adams coming in, which is a bit disappointing because I think. I think we need both. I spoke about this previously. Um, the squad, and yes, it was under Bielsa, has been injury prone. And one of the players has left in Calvin Phillips that was injury prone. Um, but Bamford, how long until he gets injured again? Does he work under Jesse Marsh? We haven't seen him play under Jesse Marsh. It would be disappointing if we didn't bring a striker and, and a backup midfielder in because the depth so far, and this is, Based on if we play a four-two-two-two, Rocker and Adams start. For example, one of them goes down injured. Who do we bring in? Calvin Phillips isn't here anymore. Forshaw, does Forshaw does Forshaw do a job? Stuart Dallas, yeah, but he's had a big injury. Is he the same player? I the next one would be Lewis Bate, and I do think Lewis Bate needs a crack this year, and I'd be very very happy for him to come in. So he would be one. But you, you, one player out, you replace him with uh, Davis, and he can't play every game. He's only young, uh, and you don't want to put him into games where he, he confidence gets shot. So, you know, I just think we're really short in the midfield spot right now, and you've got, you know, Aronson, but he's a forward-thinking midfielder, so not likely to play it as a, a, in that deep-lying role. Um, you know, in the in the unfortunate occasion where it's Mark Rocker that gets injured, Tyler Adams becomes the ball playing midfielder, and he he's not great on the ball. So obviously, then Lewis Bate becomes that player, and he's got a great range of passing, but he's only really young, and I feel like you know you've got to have four midfielders in that spot because Lewis Bate plays under twenty threes and gets brought in if need be. But I think you need Kamara as well. I think we need to get Kamara as well. Um. Let me know in your comment section below what you th what you think. Um, I will actually talk on one of the fix one of the uh, formations and tactics that one of the outlets has, and I won't name who, but one of them put out something and, and named the players in each spot, and I just laughed because I thought it's it's funny how and and it's one thing I miss about the championship is you didn't get all the opinions of every single newspaper and and some of the dumbest opinions because they're not Leeds fans and they just don't understand and they don't get it. Like, even even uh, the whole Bielsa ball thing and the whole, oh, burnout, Bielsa burnout, which I, there is some truth to it, I do agree, but in that first season, there was no Bielsa burnout. Anyway, because um, next year we brained it. So I, I just think... Sometimes mainstream uh, news talking about Leeds United can be very biased, can be very against us, um, you know. So I just and, and and people putting opinions out, and they're not even Leeds supporters, like you know. That's why I'm creating this little space and my channel is so people can actual Leeds United fans can have a serious conversation and put their opinions out there, and and whenever someone puts an opinion, I I. I I give it time, and I actually um, I read it, and I give it time, and I get, and I and I agree majority with them. Even if I don't, I I understand. But sometimes these opinions are shocking, and I'll get on to that one. Um, the last one is there's no news on Sinistera. Uh, Sinister, Sinistera. Um, it's just the same sort of thing. He's coming in, so we'll see until something really develops on him. I won't, I won't really talk about him too much more until something big happens uh, where he's actually flying in and it'll probably happen really quickly because that popped up out of nowhere. So the formation that was talked about, uh, was a four, four, uh, four, three, three, which is fine. Whatever. It's not a formation. I don't think Jesse Marsh plays it often. He plays a four, two, two, two or a four, two, three, one. So a four, two, three, one, you could see it as a, um, a four three three in some respects because you've still got the attacking it's just of with an attacking midfielder, but your wingers sit a bit deeper. They don't sit as high as a four three three. Um, but either way, in this formation and look, most of it was okay. But in this formation, they had uh, the starting center halves as Cooper and Lorente. Um, and I'm sorry, but those two aren't starting. If you've got Robin Cock and Stroik, every Leeds fan will tell you they will be the two starters next year. Next year, whether they drop out of form and the others come in, I don't know. 
Um, I know Liam Cooper is a club captain. And look, he may start, but it won't be Cooper and Lorraine Taylor. That, that, that right there is too much liability at the back. I don't mind Cooper. And right now, I actually prefer Cooper to play over Lorente. I used to, I used to not mind Lorente, but he's made some serious mistakes. Re, um, in, you know, he had a really poor end of the year. Um, I think I think Cooper, while he has a, a brain fart in him, for most of the game, he'll play well. And the, I guess, you know, you can make an argument that the best centre-halves don't make massive blunders like he does. You know, it will just be... He'll play... And this is... I'm not Liam Cooper bashing because... They say he's just crap for 90 minutes. He is genuinely pretty good for 90 minutes. But he just has these moments, and it costs us goals. And he just, you know, the red card against Man City always stands out. Like, what, where did that come from? You know, you got to be smarter than that, especially as a captain and as an experienced centre-back. So that's my only problem with Liam Cooper at centre-back is just he has these brain fart moments. And good centre-halves, like, Robin Cock has it a bit, but Stroik doesn't really have those brain fart moments. You can have little moments where you make mistakes, that's fine. But massive mistakes like red cards, diving into challenges and, and, and letting players go around you, you know, like Stroik might be positionally out of out of place, but he tries to recover. Liam Cooper does that, tries to make a tackle, falls on his ass. Like he just has these really bad blunders in him. Um, but anyway, I won't bash on him too much. I still think he's got a purpose in this squad, but I don't think he's a starting centre-back. Um, and then they had Aronson on the wing, on the right wing. Look, he can play there, but he was brought in to be a midfielder, which is quite clearly what he's going to do. Now, I might be completely wrong, and a 4-3-3 might be what they go for. I don't see it, but hey, say they do. Even in that situation, you're playing with a defensive midfielder. So for, this is if it's a 4-3-3, who plays defensive midfielder? Tyler Adams, okay. Next up is Mark Rocker. Who plays in, Who plays the other spot in the back, in that midf midfield three? Because we don't have another person. We don't have anyone else to play in that midfield. Um, so, again, like I said, it's just some of these news articles, like, you know, just trying to get clicks, just trying to be relevant. And you're like, don't comment on leads if you don't know what you're talking about. You know what I mean? Like, just frustrating. Very, very frustrating. Last year, the biggest thing was, you know, everyone, oh, Leeds going to go down. Leeds being crap this year. We were injury-stricken. That was the biggest frustration. And some of these big channels, and, um, you know, I'll name one of them because it really, he's a Chelsea fan. Um, Rory Jennings, if you know of him, he 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 had some shocking takes about, takes about how shit Leeds were. Um, James Lawrence Olcott, he actually turned around and said, well, it's been injuries, injuries, injury-stricken. Phillips and Bamford, you know, spine of the team. Cooper, all out, constantly out. Um, and when we had one of Cock or Lorente injured, we didn't have another player to come in or you know, injured or, or not playing well. We didn't have another player at centre-back to come in and just give him a break. And that's the biggest thing in football, having that depth. And that's why, you know, that's the only thing I'll say about Bielsa is, yes, I understood the whole tight-knit squad, small squad, players play multiple positions. I 100% agree with all of it, except for the small squad part. I think you need players that can play multiple positions. I think that's just part of the game now. But my only thing was the small squad. You can have a medium-sized squad, just two or three more players that all fit in. I just think we, you know, Bielsa would have been so much more successful in the last year if he had have had two or three more players. Um, and he was loyal, and that's great. Um, and, and I appreciate him being loyal to players, but you've got to sometimes, there's loyalty, and then there's, uh, you know, falling on your sword. And unfortunately, he fell on his sword. I still don't agree with how he went out, but that's, that's football for you. Um Again, see how I said it was going to be a short video because I've got very short notes, but I've crapped on for ages. So um, if you like the video, please uh, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate all your support. And uh, yeah, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Peace.